don't you dare. Welcome back, everybody. John Arvosis, May 22nd, Monday, and I'm dealing with a barking dog. So I just was scolding her when the camera started. <laughs> she was just getting ready to bark again. Anyway, hey, everybody, uh, here to talk about Ukraine. As always, uh, this is my nightly show, Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S., where we talk about the latest news from Ukraine. And boy, <laughs> boy, is there news today. Today's going to be a fun one. Um, but uh, as always, let me get TikTok rolling here on my iPad. And uh, then we will wait. Come on, go live. And then we will wait two or three minutes for folks to arrive. Enough of you on YouTube and TikTok as well. And then we will start the show officially once folks get the notification and show up. But uh, yeah, oh, fun news today. As you can see, at least those of you on YouTube, et cetera, I have a very small list of topics that will probably go long because each one is really interesting. So, oh la la, very interesting day. Anyway, hey, Jack in Idaho. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, actually, as always, introduce yourselves. Say where you're from, if you would. That's how we sort of like to start the show anyway, since we got to wait a few minutes for folks to arrive. It's always nice to have people say where you're from. I think. So there. Oh, hey, San Francisco. Oh, boy. <clears throat> yeah, well, where's Belgorod going? Don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> oh, God. My dog is going insane today. The problem is now... <laughs> that's good stay there i've closed the curtain so now she gets up on the little chair she likes to sit on and she's like going like this trying to move the curtain out of the way but not succeeding so as i'm talking to you she's like <laughs> with her head against the curtain there you go go there you go okay now she's on the chair next to me all right anyway we're waiting for a minute as i said uh for folks to get rolling so maybe another minute or so and we'll get started i just waiting for the notification to go out on tiktok and youtube etc just a reminder, folks, I've got YouTube over here, excuse me, TikTok over here on my iPad. I've got YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter over here on my laptop. So that's why you will see me looking back and forth and back and forth. But it's all good. Hey, Shadow, over on Twitch. Woo, anyway, gorgeous day in Chicago again, 80 degrees. Oh, my God. It was actually, I mean, it was like warm today. Beautiful day. Anyway, all right, I think I'm going to get rolling here. Hang on, guys. Another sip of water and we'll get started. So welcome, everybody. Uh, John Aravos is here. Uh, thank you, B. Smith, for the gifts already and tea. Uh, this is my nightly show. Thank you, Ron. Uh, and crazy, crazy am. Crazy, it's got to be crazy ant, isn't it? Or crazy am. <laughs> anyway, crazy, oh, crazy American overseas. That's it. Hey, Katrina, thank you, too. Thank you guys for all the gifts on TikTok. Um, can now see. So the way the show works is I do the first half of the show, uh, the news. Thank you, Fred Thompson, for the hat there. Uh, first half of the show is the news. Second half of the show is your guys' questions, depending how long the show goes. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's an hour and 20. It just depends how long sort of the news goes. Um, the way we do this is you guys submit questions on TikTok via the Q&A link that is in my profile. The rest of you uh, can submit them at the bottom of the screen. Uh, one thing I do do, though, is uh, special thanks for anybody who wants to give gifts on TikTok. Thank you, Aviv, for all those there. Uh, gifts on TikTok because I, or frankly, the YouTube uh, Super Chats as well. Thank you, Tattooed Mom, um, because I do this for free and I do it full time. I've been covering Ukraine since the war broke out. Uh, it's all I do now. I'm not doing any consulting. So your guys' gifts actually help me keep doing this. Oops, my microphone. TikTokers, you didn't even mention my microphone was bad today. I had my microphone off. Um, but I do this I do this for free. So your guys' gifts very much help me keep doing this work. So I appreciate it. Um, as a thank you on TikTok, when I see your guy, we'll ignore mom's phone going off today. Hey, thank you, Happy Beach. When I see um, you guys uh, sending gifts, I will always try to do a thank you. Thank you, Tattooed Mom, when I see it. And actually, I'm going to grab mom's phone so at least I can turn off the ringer in here whenever it rings. Uh, you guys can submit questions via the... Uh, the uh, super chat questions, super stickers are just to say thank you. Super chat questions, thank you. I see that. Who is that, Amanda? Oh, it's not Amanda. That was somebody else. Ah, who was that? Who was that? That was, uh, oh, that was John. Oh, John S. I'm sorry. Thank you, John S. Um, you guys can submit them via the super chat questions. And as a thanks for the super chat questions, I will always get to that as the next issue I talk about. Even if we're not in question and answer period, let me grab, I'm visiting mom for the week. Let me grab mom's phone so I can turn it off. Every time somebody say there, ah, stay there. We're not going anywhere. No, 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 no. We're not going anywhere. My dog heard the phone ring, and she always assumes if the phone, like in DC, when the phone rings, it's because somebody's coming up. 
So she thinks here every time somebody calls that we're going to go open the garage. No, 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 no. That's not happening, dog. All right. So let's get rolling here. Um, Really interesting news day. So today is day 452 of Vladimir Putin's 10-day special military operation in Ukraine. Um, it's a very bad day for the Russians. I mean, I'm laughing because today is a massive schadenfreude day. Schadenfreude, wonderful German word. Um, it means taking pleasure in the pain of others. Um, it's usually not a very nice thing. But in this case, I am taking great pleasure in the pain of the Russian government today because Russia invaded Russia today and it's causing a bit of a, a bit of angst. So today what happened, thank you for the gift there, who is that, Delaney? So today what happened was um, someone claiming to be Russians, I'll get to this in a second, thank you, Mads, as far as who they are, but I think they, in fact, are Russians. Uh, thank you, Kanausi. Someone claiming to be Russians invaded across the border here. Here's the Kharkiv, Ukrainian second largest city. Thank you, Marino. Uh, Ukrainian, Ukraine's second largest city. About, I always forget. Uh, did I say 1.5 million? 2.5 million? I forget. Uh, maybe 1.5 million. I forget. Anyway, second largest city. Thank you, Ellie. And right across here is the Russian region of Belgorod. It's the region of Belgorod, and it's also the town of Belgorod is the capital, so to speak, of the oblast. And it's very close. Uh, the Belgorod is, well, okay. Here's Kharkiv. Kharkiv, no joke, is maybe 15, 20 miles from the border. So you're talking 25, 30 kilometers, right? And Belgorod is the same thing. It's maybe 15, 20 miles from the border. Again, 20, 25 kilometers. It's nothing, okay? So very close. Well, Belgorod is a very important center for the Russians fighting in the war, logistics, fuel, weapons, all sorts of stuff. And the Ukrainians keep attacking it just to kind of keep the Russians off edge, but also uh, for an actual uh, strategic purpose, which is also to blow up some of these supplies, et cetera, right? Well, today, a number of Russian people, soldiers, invaded Belgorod from Ukraine uh, blew up the border, like, attacked and I guess killed the border agents and invaded several miles and took the land and declared it free <laughs> to be free Belgorod. Um, they released a number of videos. These videos were just wild. Um, two groups uh, claiming themselves to be the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Coalition, uh, a legion, excuse me, Freedom of Russia Legion, put out videos claiming that just that, that, that it was... Uh, a bunch of Russian military guys saying we are free Russians. Um, many of them were very likely former Russian military, and they are now fighting for you, not for Ukraine, but fighting against Putin, against dictatorship, um, because they believe the war is wrong and they believe Putin's wrong and they want to liberate their region of Russia to make it independent again, right, before Russia, uh, uh, you know, subsumed it as part of Russia. Um the videos are hilarious. I mean, the video, there's the video of the soldiers that was just wild. Uh, thank you, Joanne, for the glasses. And then there was a video of the different groups. Thank you, TikTok novice, for those. Uh, there was a video of the different uh, groups representing Belgorod. What is it? No Novgorod. Um, and another area right there across the border. And again, traditionally, these were independent areas that Russia took over. And each group was saying that they were representative of the new independent region, independent of Moscow. I mean, <laughs> well, okay. There was initially concern, not concern, but thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Bankovic as well. I see you now. Um, there was initially concern that, um, that this could have been a false flag. Right. In other words, could this have been Putin himself doing it? Because think about it. Right. It's hard to know what he was trying to do. But what if Putin was doing this and decided, you know, we're going to have troops invade Russia and start to take land and we're going to claim the Ukrainians are behind it and I'm going to use it to do I don't know what. You know, oh, thank you, McFadge. That was a very nice one. I appreciate the, the champion gift. Um, Phil, I don't know if you meant to ask a question. Thank you either way. But if you did, feel free to just post a question normally. Um, thank you for the heart there, Ellie. Um, I've been talking to some of the you know defense experts that I follow today on Twitter, and they think it's real. Everybody thinks it's real, basically. Nobody thinks it's Putin who's behind this. Thank you, Martin, for the hearts. Uh, no one thinks it's Putin who's behind this. Um, they think these guys are real. Um, it, it is quite likely, I think at this point, that the Ukrainian government is helping these guys, meaning, you know, they had to go across the Ukrainian border and not get blown up because they're Russians, right? So it is likely Ukraine has been working with them, but these guys are basically independent of 
freedom fighters, Russian freedom fighters going after the Russian government. It's pretty freaking wild. Um, just to give you a little more here. Oh, so wh why? These guys don't like Putin and they want to liberate their land. If you're Ukraine, you'd say more power to you, right? What this does is um, this really throws the Russians off their game. Russia has been preparing for the Ukrainian, oops, the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Thank you, B. Smith, for the gifts there on TikTok. I see him. Russia has been preparing for the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Now, the expectation from all the experts, and this is, I'm not uh, breaking any secrets here. This is the general expectation, is that eventually Ukraine is going to want to attack the Zaporizhia province here because they're going to want to cut off. Russia controls all of this, okay, like 17% of Ukraine. They're going to want to break this in half. So they're probably want to going to do it, want to going to do it. They're probably going to want to do it here in Zaporizhia. So people think that's a prime target. Um, Kherson, another prime target, right? This area here, in part because, A, you do want to split the two regions, but B, you want to get as close as you can to Crimea, right? Currently, this is where the borderline is, the front line between Russian troops and Ukrainian troops. So Ukrainian troops are up here. Ukrainian troops would love to get down here because you can hit a lot more, well, you can hit with a lot more weapons, all of Crimea, when you're closer. So the expectation is a lot of fighting going on around here, a lot of fighting here, blowing up, maybe some fighting here, no fighting up here. So what did these guys do? They invaded Russia up here. Russia now has to move a lot of troops and a lot of weapons up here because Russia, first of all, needs to get its land back <laughs> because these guys are controlling this land as free Russia. You don't want to move your tanks and your planes and your ammunition and your men all the way up here if you're preparing for the Ukrainians to attack you somewhere down here, right? That's not very beneficial. So this is a really useful thing uh, for these Russians to be doing in terms of how it helps Ukraine. And frankly, who knows? You know, I mean, I don't think they're going to win getting their free Russia, but it certainly freaks the Russians out. It freaks Putin out. It throws the Russian off their game right as they're waiting for the counteroffensive. Um, I was going to tell you a few things here. Let me tell you. Um, actually, let me read you one quote. One quote was from the uh, uh, one of the videos. The It was a number of different organizations speaking out about. Thank you, Julius. I'll pull this up right now. A number of organizations uh, speaking out about this. But listen, the one said, the one uh, is the Alliance of Indigenous Peoples. Thank you, Killers, for the hat. An organization whose goal is the dismantling of Russia and the, this is the video, and the revival of nation states in their original territories published a video calling the people of Chuvashia, Belgorod region, Voronezh, and Novgorod republics to vote for independence on an upcoming referendum. So they're also calling for a referendum which is exactly what Putin did when he um, uh, when he invaded in 2014, took Crimea, and then held a fake referendum to say, oh, look, 80, 99% of the people want to be Russian. Yay, right? He did the same crap out here in Luhansk and Donetsk in the two Ukrainian provinces in the east, held a fake referendum. Actually, he also held a fake referendum last fall in all four of these provinces, right? Um, so these guys are calling for their own referendum now. Again, it is all one big, thank you, Brock, for the heart there, one big, you know, fungu to Putin, basically, to throw him off his game. Now, General Hurtling had a really interesting analysis of this. Thank you, Ellie, for the uh, confetti there. General Hurtling's American general. I really like him. Um, the, uh, yeah, Julius, let me get to your question in a second. I just don't want to sort of get off this roll for a second here, okay? Um, general Hurtling is uh, American general. Thank you, Kanausi, for the hearts there. Very good, a former general, very smart man. And he says that he thinks this could be one of three things. And again, that the Ukrainians are clearly involved in terms of at least, he's implying the Ukrainians are involved in terms of at least helping these guys out, right? Thank you for the heart there. Oh, sorry, who was that really quick? Oh, that was uh, Laurie. Thank you, Laurie, for the heart there on TikTok. He says um, it could be one of three things, a raid, a feint or a demonstration. And he explained what the three were. And I thought it was just kind of interesting. They're all things you will be familiar with, but it's interesting to see him put the military terms to them. So one, a raid. A raid is basically um, an attack, a quick attack for a specific purpose and uh, to sow confusion or panic and then withdraw. That would make sense, right? In this case, you go across the border 
You've invaded. You freak them out. Russians are now in panic. They're no longer focusing on this. It's like the Eye of Sauron in uh, in Lord of the Rings, right? He's like looking here, and then it's like, whoa, there's Frodo. Basically, Frodo just popped up over here, and Sauron is and Kremlin is freaking out. And you just throw them off their game. So it could be a raid. In other words, small purpose, not really intending to win, but intending just to screw them up and screw with them, right? Thank you for the let's go there. Oh, who's that? Trying to see here. Come on, TikTok. Don't hide the person from me. Oh, Brand, uh, Brando. Thank you, Brand Brando. I'm going to guess Brando. Thank you for that. Um, it could be a feint. A feint is a quick attack to pretend you're launching a bigger attack. Um, then you withdraw. So the feint, the first one, the raid, is actually going in and doing something, usually with a specific purpose. You could be going in to liberate someone, right? But Or in this case, just to freak them out, and then you leave. A feint is more of the just quick attack to pretend you're launching a bigger attack. In other words, it could be that they're going after this to make the Russians think, oh my God, the counteroffensive might actually begin up here. What if the counteroffensive truly is to take part of Russia and hold it hostage, right? Thank you, Brando, for the hat there. The third is a, um, what did I say? A uh, demonstration. Demonstration, he said, is more moving troops around and pretending you're going to attack when you're really not, but it's the same purpose. You're trying to freak them out. You're trying to make the eye, the evil eye focus up here and start to say, oh shit, we better put some of our troops up here. We better put some of our military, some of our, uh, uh, you know, our weapons, our tanks, etc." Either way, it's a freaking mess for Russia, and I'm loving it. I mean, I do hope these guys don't all get obliterated by the Russians, but uh, thank you, Vicky, for the balloons, but uh, it's a really freaking hilarious story. Uh, there really wasn't anything new about it before I came on with you guys. The hair, is explained. the hair is getting cut on Wednesday, and I'm so excited because it's getting long and crazy. Ah! Love cutting my hair. Um, but anyway, very interesting. So very interesting. Um, let me get Julius's question really quick. And then we will go. Thank you, Janice, for that little, I think it's, is it a uh, my ice cream cone or a microphone? One of them. Um, it's not for the high kill count and war crimes, honestly. This war, oh, if not for the high kill count and war crimes. Thank you, B. Smith. I see those on TikTok and Mark. Um, if not for the high kill count and war crimes, this war would be pretty ridiculous in many ways. It's like it's being run by chimps on meth. I'd seen somebody else. I don't know if it was you, actually. I saw somebody else on Twitter saying that earlier today as well. They were like, it's almost funny if you didn't, of course, have these war crimes and genocide. Thank you, Brando, for the hat and mustache. But, you know, uh, thank you, Mark, for the hat. You know, you you have to sort of thank God that, I mean, the Russians are... Thank you, Tom. The Russians are raising hell, obviously. Okay. Oops. My microphone fell down again. The Russians are there. Let's see if it stays. The Russians are raising hell. Um, but at the same time, they're so, I mean, they're killing a lot of Ukrainians. They're doing a lot of war crimes, but at least they're bad at this. It's better to have, uh, thank you, Bonnie, for that. Better to have somebody who's really bad at this doing the, what the Russians are doing than somebody who's really good at this who could do even more harm and possibly win in the end. Thank you, Kanausi. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for the for the gift there. But, yeah, no, I'm with you. It's, it's very strange. It's really strange. Um, Phil, I did not see if you actually had a question. Um, if one of the mods can let me know if there was one that I missed. Let me know. And Vic, thank you for the super sticker. Very nice of you. Um, it wasn't you. Okay. It was some, but somebody said the exact same thing today. That's why I'm laughing because I think I might have even retweeted it, or at least I liked it. Um, thank you, Brando and Pagey, both for the gifts on TikTok. Um, let's talk about Bakhmut. So that's all there is on that. I mean, it's it's a story that's developing. The Russians are freaked out. We can talk about it during the QA, of course. But um, but let's go on with Bakhmut now. So Bakhmut. Big story this weekend before we had the insurrection in Russia today. Thank you. Oh, who is that? Up, 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 up. Mariachi. Mark. Thank you, Mark, for the mariachi hat. Um, the big story today was Bakhmut. Uh, the big story yesterday, I should say, was Bakhmut. The Russians are claiming that they took Bakhmut this weekend. Now, I mean, let me just say thank you, Timothy, for the heart The heart there. Um, well, let's first, just to remind folks, Bakhmut, Ukrainian town over here. 65,000 population. Right now, it's probably more like three or 4,000 population max, maybe even less. Um, the Russians have been trying to take it, depending who you talk to, anywhere from nine to 11 months. The Russians have been, <laughs> thank you, Julius. Uh, the Russians have been trying to take this town. Unsuccessfully, this weekend, the Russians claim they took the town, 
Um, there is still massive fighting going on today. Thank you, Bonnie, for the rose. Massive fighting going on today in that town. And a lot of folks, I'm going to tell you in a second, a lot of folks are saying, um, <laughs> thank you, Brando, for the seal. A lot of folks are saying Russia basically announced victory too soon in Bakhmut. Now, quick aside, Bakhmut just doesn't matter. Ukrainians hate when I say this, but sorry, guys, nobody in the West I would say almost nobody in the West who does defense stuff, national security stuff, foreign policy, thinks Bakhmut matters. Obviously, on a human level, of course it matters. I'm talking strategic military. Is there a reason the Russian military would want to win Bakhmut? Um, thank you, Bax, for the uh, the gold coins. I always think they're chips, but they're gold coins, I'm sure. Um, is there a reason the Russian military would want to win this town? Nobody can find one. It doesn't help them. It doesn't help them go after the nearby towns. It's just, it's not helpful. Well, Get this. So General Hurley weighed in on this one too today. And he made a really interesting observation. He said, people keep showing maps, like about Bakhmut, for example, and they show, you know, what the Russians control and what the Ukrainians control and how much more the Russians have this kind of, and how the Ukrainians are only on the outskirts, right? Then he shared a topographical map. Basically, thank you, Bax, for those. Now I want watermelon. Um, he showed a topographical map, which basically shows the, uh, the altitudes, right? So it shows the hills and the mountains nearby and this kind of stuff, right? Well, when you look at the topographical map, what do you see? You see the Russians control most of the town of Bakhmut itself, which is in a valley. And who controls, I don't know if they're hills or mountains, but they're large right outside the town. Who controls the, the high up land in the north, in the east, and then like to the southwest? The Ukrainians. Um, thank you, Happy Beach, for the train. Let me read you this from General Hurtling. So first he says, uh, never trust anybody who shows you a, um, a map that's just a flat map. You always want to look at the ground because, right, and generally speaking, high ground, better than low ground, right? Because you're, you're firing from up above, down on people. You're in a valley. You could be surrounded, etc. Listen to this from Hurtling. Um, oh, thank you for the pause there, Mark. Um, Currently on Twitter yesterday, as many of us had said multiple times, Prigozhin, who's the uh, Russian in charge of the Wagner group that has been fighting, uh, mostly they're the guys who've been fighting the battle in Bakhmut uh, for the Russians. As many of us have said multiple times, Prigozhin is not a professional soldier and neither are his troops. He then writes in quotes like, this is his like, hey, you won. He says, congratulations, Yevgeny, Prigozhin's first name. You've put the Wagner flag in the center of the city and you're surrounded. He says, disaster for where? He said, it's been a disaster for Wagner over the last five months, dot, 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 and next week. He says that because, basically, I'm paraphrasing from what he was writing. He is saying that the Ukrainians have the Wagner group surrounded. They intentionally were going after the suburbs, north, south, and then like uh, west. They've got them surrounded. The Ukrainians control the high ground, which means not just you've surrounded them, but you're fighting, you're blowing them up. You're shooting down at them. And he says, it's been a disaster for five months for the Russians. And just wait until next week when the Ukrainians start fighting back. And they're going to just basically destroy these guys. Um, Let's see what happens. Hurtling is a very smart American general. Um, he knows his stuff. It's, it's, I just, you know, thank you, Marino. It was already dumb of the Russians to claim credit for taking uh, Bakhmut because Bakhmut doesn't matter. And I realized for, you know, uh, for morale purposes, they felt like they had to give the, the Russian people something, right? Thank you, Bonnie, for the heart. They had to give the Russian people something. So they said, oh my God, look at this wonderful town we took. It's so big and important, right? Um, but the danger wasn't just overinflating an insignificant strategic town, a, a town that is strategically insignificant, let me say. It was also the danger of claiming victory too quickly. And the Ukrainians may very well get part of Bakhmut back in the next few weeks or decimate the, re the remaining Russian troops. It's going to be a freaking disaster. Uh, we hope. Um, let me do a quick pitch for my Discord. And then we are going to talk about a Wall Street Journal story about um, some new potential NATO guarantees for Ukraine that... Let's see if that's enough to uh, to stop the Russians from starting the war again. Hang on a sec. So I do have a Discord community. You can check it out at discord.erevosis.com. 
Uh, the link is in my profile on TikTok. That link tree link you see, click it. All my links come up. You guys through erevosis.com at the bottom or for Discord, you can just go to the tiny URL I've got at the bottom. But basically Discord is a really neat online chat community. We've been talking all day about lots of topics, but Ukraine especially, a lot of us are there all day long. Thank you, Cheryl, for the hot air balloons. That one's very cool. I appreciate that. And I know, very generous of you. Thank you. Um, a lot of us are there all day long chatting about Ukraine, discussing it like this, this topic we've been talking about all day. So it's nice for that if you're into this and kind of want to continue the, the conversation, a nice sane group as well, I would say. It is also nice because I do some fundraising for Ukraine there and for myself, because as I've told you, I do this full time. I've been doing it full time since the war broke out. This is my job. Uh, so the idea is... Uh, you know, if I'm able to make some money doing that, I'm able to keep doing this because I'm paying my bills. So one of the things I do with the Discord is I've got two things. One, you can sign up for a uh, subscription, basically, to to uh, benefit my work, uh, you know, once a month, $7.99 a month, whatever it is. Um, but I would very much appreciate if folks would consider doing that if you've been watching for a while and you like my work. Consider per perhaps going to the Discord and just signing up on a monthly basis. But also, we've got really cool auctions. Uh, thank you, Tom, for the waving guy. Um, we've got neat auctions of stuff that I get in Ukraine, and then I auction off. And then the winner, 50% uh, of the proceeds go to support me and my work, and 50% we channel back to Ukraine. And we've already sent like, I'd say eight or $10,000. I've, I've got to add it. I mean, I've got it on my spreadsheet, but I've got to add it up in terms of the money we sent back to Ukraine. And then, of course, thank you, Brock, for that on TikTok. It also is supporting my work as well, which is very important because I do this full time. And like everybody else, this is my job. I need to get paid. <laughs> so thank you all for helping on that. But do go check out the Discord. We've got actually six or seven auction items that are, the auctions are ending on Wednesday. Thank you, Bonnie. So now is a good time to go check them out because now is when people finally start putting their bids in. Uh, just lots of cool stuff from Ukraine, Russian military patch, um, you, uh, cool sort of Ukrainian fridge magnets. There's a, I'm trying to remember the sweatshirt. Yes, there's a sweatshirt. Uh, the Russian warship go F yourself sweatshirt. That's very cool. And lots of other stuff. So please do go check it out. Um, it's discord.erevosis.com. The free the free Republic of, of Belgorod. So yes, Mario wants to know where the free Republic of Belgorod is. The free Republic of Belgorod, more or less, I don't have the entire Oblast, um, more or less, I want to say it's about here-ish. I'd have to look at a better Google map to uh, to see exactly how big it is. But I know Belgorod itself is about here. So yes, that is where the currently free Republic of Belgorod is located in Russia. All right, um, Wall Street Journal. See, I knew it was gonna go long again today. Interesting story in the Wall Street Journal that NATO is trying to find ways of basically, uh, once the war is over, how do we, oops, losing this again. How do we ensure that the Russians don't invade again someday, okay? And uh, this is a concern that I've had. I, I am not convinced that anything short of NATO membership is going to be enough to stop Russia from building up its army and in five years or 10 years or whatever, invading again, because they want it, they don't think Ukraine's real. They think, you know, Ukraine and Russia, we're all one people and the Ukrainians are just deluded. Right. I mean, I've been watching, I'm starting to watch Timothy Snyder's uh, Yale class about Ukrainian history that a number of you had recommended. And my cousin's been watching it too. So I started it this week. And that's one of the points he makes is this sort of, you know, from Putin's perspective, Ukraine not only doesn't exist, but the Ukrainian people are deluded. They, they falsely think they're this nation, but they're really Russians. They just don't realize it. And it's Putin's job to, to beat the crap out of them, to teach them, to, to remember how Russian they really are. Right. Um, the uh, So the, the point is that what's going to stop Putin from doing that after the war ends? What's going to stop him from building his military up and attacking Ukraine again? I don't think anything short of NATO membership will. But what the Wall Street Journal was saying today is that one of the things that, um, that NATO is uh, coalescing around is a security pledge to Ukraine. Um, and the, the pledge is basically an Israel-style pledge. Basically, and I think everyone knows this, the U.S. Uh, is going to support Israel. Israel gets attacked. The Arab states go to war with Israel. We're going to war with the Arab states. Uh, we all know that. Um, there isn't an actual treaty that says that. It is an American pledge. It's American policy. It's an understanding. It's not really a treaty. But at the same time, all the Arab states know if they literally try to invade Israel, 
we will come to Israel's aid. They will be at war with America as well. And it stops them from doing it because there's no point, right? They're not going to win if they go up against America. They want, NATO wants something similar for Ukraine, but they don't want NATO membership for a while. They're afraid of doing NATO membership. So let me read a little bit of what they're talking about. Um, they're the, again, they compare it to the Israeli agreement. One of the things that Israel has is a uh, 10 year, um, which I did not realize this actually, we pass uh, Israeli aid in 10 year segments. So for example, over the next 10 years, we have promised Israel 38 billion with a B dollars in aid. That's a lot. I mean, we're talking 3.8 billion a year, right? So the concept is that Israel's neighbors know that Israel's getting that money. There's no doubt. There's no, hey, well, depending on the election next year, maybe America won't support Israel, this kind of thing, right? No, the, the, the Arabs know that Israel's getting $3.8 billion next year, no matter who wins the presidency, right? And doing something similar for Ukraine. Now, I worry about this a little because first of all, is the US Congress gonna approve a 10-year aid package for Ukraine? Right. I don't see that happening. I really don't see that happening in today's climate. But mind you, the concern in it. OK, you got the MAGA Republicans, right, who are bad guys when it comes to Ukraine. You've got the good Republicans, which would be the uh, Mitch McConnell Republicans in, in the Senate. Um, Kevin McCarthy speaking good on Ukraine lately, although he's been bad. I mean, let me rephrase this. McCarthy has to suck up to the bad guys to keep his speakership in the House. So because the MAGA people have been, it's, he's got too small of a margin, basically. It's, it, it, he has no choice, right? He's got to suck up to the MAGA people. So little danger there as far as, you know, are they going to keep supporting Ukraine? I, I have a, I'm not convinced anybody's going to support a 10-year plan. I just don't think they will. I mean, I think Democrats would. I think for everybody else, it's too much. It's just too much money. That's my first concern. Second of all, um, is the new, let's pretend Trump wins the presidency. Thank you, Scott, which he can. We all saw what happened in the last four years. Um, I don't care what your view is of Trump or whatever. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah, EC and Julius, I'll get to your guys in a second. Um, I don't really care what people think of Trump. I'm not sort of getting into that issue. But um, it was clear that Trump really likes Vladimir Putin and Trump really doesn't like Ukraine. He thinks Ukraine was in some secret conspiracy with Hillary to cost him the election in 2016. He believes these crazy conspiracy theories about Ukraine. And remember, he tried to strong arm Zelensky, right? Um, you know, I'd like you to do me a favor, though. Remember, he was uh, basically making weapons contingent for Ukraine to, to defend themselves against Russia, contingent on whether Ukraine would help him dig up basically fake information about Joe Biden for the election. So he doesn't like, and that got him impeached. He does not like Zelensky. Um, the concern is, is a new Trump administration going to, going to abide by this agreement? Are they even if there's a written, you know, law or whatever? Is he going to really provide the money? Is a Republican Congress going to override the law, which they can? They can just pass a new law amending it. They would. Trump would want them to for sure, and would, they would probably do it. Um, if Russia were to reinvade Ukraine, is Donald Trump really going to abide by the agreement to come to Ukraine's aid? No. I mean, there's always a chance, right? But in general, right now, no. He's not going to come to Ukraine's aid. So I still think this agreement isn't enough. And the U.S. is to be the prime guarantor of the security guarantor of the agreement. Um, other countries would sign on. Uh, the, the idea is to have the U.S., the U.K., Germany and France sign on. But the problem is if the U.S. is the prime guarantor and the U.S. cannot be trusted, I think a Democratic administration can be trusted just because we're talking about Ukraine. Generally, in the past, it would have been Republican administrations that you could trust more. Generally speaking, in terms of um, you know going to war abroad for our allies, tended to be more of a Republican thing than, Dem I mean, I don't want to knock the Democrats here, but it tended to be certainly um, you would have had more angst on the Democratic left, typically, than you would have on the right of the Republicans, right? Even if Democrats went, Democrats went along with Iraq, you had some, Dem more Democrats would be concerned about it than Republicans. Now it's the opposite. You're going to have more Democrats supporting Ukraine, Republicans. Anyway, I'm just not, I'm, I'm really not convinced. I'm just, I, I, I'm intrigued. But if I were Ukraine, None of this is enough of a none of this is enough of a promise. I mean, you you literally need first you need multiple countries, and it's not just the US. You need you need Poland. You need, you know, you need a number of other countries that join in and say, we are going to war if Russia invades next time. We're not just providing weapons, we're going to war. 
That's that's the first thing. Um, and this aid, okay, whatever. But I worry that this aid thing is enough. Honestly, they need to. Ukraine needs to be a member of NATO. That's the only way to stop this going forward. Now, now there is one issue. The polls raised it today, and the polls are not wrong. Poland government um, said that look, you know, we can't let Ukraine join NATO if there's a war still going on. Fair point. Um, you know, if. If, if Ukraine isn't able to get back all of its territory, if Russia still controls Crimea and Ukraine still wants to get Crimea back, Ukraine becomes a member of NATO and we're potentially literally getting ourselves into a war because is Ukraine going to foment a war? I mean, right? It's not like Ukraine's going to join NATO and say, well, we're going to give up Crimea. We're never going after Crimea again. If they do that, then for sure they should get into NATO. But if they say, no, we're still going after Crimea in the future, they're literally promising a war. And the other NATO countries are like, well, we don't want to have somebody in that is literally roping us into a war that we're not going to be able to choose. So anyway, it's going to be an issue. Um, uh, EC is saying, super chat question, do you think the incursion and takeover of Belgorod is a future bargaining chip for Ukraine to negotiate Crimea? Yes. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to hold it. This is something Zelensky... I believe it was Zelensky in those uh, cables. Remember the classified cables that are documents that that idiot, the 21 year old stole and was pro posting on, uh, on discord. One of them was Zelensky, I believe in February or something talking about the possibility, or at least I would say musing about like, what if saying, you know, what if we grabbed some Russian territory and used it as a bargaining chip? Right? So, it is not something that the Ukrainians have never thought about. The question is whether it was something that they considered seriously that I don't know, but thought about, yes. You know, um, thank you, F. Drew, for donating. Uh, let me see here. Hang on a sec. One second here. Um, yep, Phil, we already got you. Vic, we got you. Julius, um, <laughs> Julius, I'm getting my hair cut. Uh, Mario, we did the Free Republic, bargaining chip, and then Julius, again, with a super chat question, saw a report that Russian officials are forbidden to retire, yes, until the war ends, and Russia is having issues with rampant alcohol abuses at all level. Um, Russia always has rampant uh, issues with alcohol abuse at all level. I'm not saying that to be catty. I'm saying that to be literal. Um, that is a, Jesus, I'm so getting this haircut. Uh, that is an, uh, that is an always, thank you, Lori. Um, for the hat there, that is an always problem with Russia. They've, I mean, alcoholism, huge problem in Russia. So that I'm not surprised. Um, it was a report about a week ago saying that the Russian government pretty much put out the order that nobody's allowed to quit. Like, I think it's any of the regional governments or anything, you aren't allowed to quit your job um, until the war ends. It was, um, I'm trying to remember, I was reading, because I was trying to figure out what the idea was here. And part of it is just to avoid like upheaval <laughs> you know, they just don't want people leaving and everything else, but it still isn't entirely clear to me what they're, what are they afraid of? You know what I mean? Like, so what if people leave their jobs? This is Russia. Do you really think people are going to get up and just quit their jobs because as a protest against the, the, the dictatorial government, you know, I can't imagine that I'm going to say, go dis pink. Not sure I'm going to get your name right, but you know who you are. Thank you for the gift there. Um, right. I mean, I, I, I don't, I just don't get what the point is here. I don't. Also, right, you want to quit your job? You know what they're going to do? They're going to draft you if you quit your job and protest over the war. They're going to say, okay, why don't you come fight, right? Thank you, Victor, for the shooting stars there. Very cool. Um, so, I, yes, I know of it, and I don't understand what the purpose is of it. Um, I don't know if it's a real civil war. Crutch is saying, is it a real Russian civil war? I guess there's a couple things here. You'd have to sort of get into the issue of um, what is a civil war in terms of the definition, but also the magnitude. Um, clearly, it is an insurrection. I would say it certainly is that, right? You've certainly got a group of Russians that are trying to overthrow the government. They're trying to do it regionally, but they're trying to overthrow the government. That is um, that is an insurrection. Um, I don't know at what point an insurrection becomes a civil war. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know... Uh, does there have to be a certain number of people? Does it have to be, uh, take on a certain level of effectiveness before you'd consider it a civil war? For example, would they have to take over like half the region? You know what I mean? Like, does it have to be, uh, does it have to be effective first? 
right? I mean, like the South or the, or the South. I mean, the South seceded and clearly that was a civil war right there. Both sides declared war on each other, right? So that's pretty clear. Thank you, Inspired Woman, for the show time. I don't know if I've seen that one before. Thank you for that. Um, so I don't know. Um, I think the more important way of maybe phrasing it is, does this matter yet? It matters in terms of, thank you for the pause. There was a Brock Smith. Thank you for the pause. It matters in terms of throwing the Russians off their game, um, making the Russians have to move troops and equipment and, and airplanes and everything else to that region away from the front uh, where we're expecting them to be fighting the Ukrainians in the counteroffensive. That's all very helpful for Ukraine. Very helpful. Um, does this mean Russia is now falling apart? Not yet. Not yet. Um, but it's very interesting. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, you know, it's the, the thing is, it's the kind of thing that could build. That's the, that's the interesting thing. It is the kind of thing that could build. Will it build? You know, I hope so, but let's see. Um, let me see. Yep. Wall Street Journal. Okay. You know what I wanted to end on? I know we've been going long, but I still want to talk about this. Um, Thank you. Oh yeah, Daniel. That Daniel was over on our Discord today as well. Daniel, who's being crazy generous again with his super chat questions. Thank you, my friend. Uh, your Discord has been very interesting today. I'm enjoying the 24/7 Erevosis report. Thanks for all the guys here. Oh, thank you. That was just a Daniel. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, we had a we had a big discussion today. I mean, all day about all this crazy stuff going on in Ukraine. Um, like I said, the the Discord's a lot of fun. Uh, please do check it out. Discord.erevosis.com. You can find the link in my bio on TikTok. You can uh, find the link at, Aravo uh, well, it'll be on the bottom of the screen shortly when I remove Daniel's comment, but it's at erevosis.com for you guys as well. Um, let me switch over to discussing an, an article. I know I'm going long, but you know we'll go long today. An article in The Atlantic um, that was really interesting. It's been shared by a lot of people in the last couple of days. It's by Elliot Cohen, who's a... Um, Writer for the Atlantic, but he's also a uh, professor at SAIS, uh, Johns Hopkins in, in D.C., very good uh, international relations school. And he wrote an article titled, It's Not Enough for Ukraine to Win, Russia Has to Lose. Um, I'm going to read you sections of, uh, actually, the, the subtitle is, Anything Less Will Encourage Russian Imperialism and Embolden Autocrats Around the World. Um, I want to read you some paragraphs from the story. Very interesting. Let me read you some paragraphs, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, the West must not only aid in the defeat of Russia, it must convince Russia that it has been defeated, right? So Russia not only has to be defeated, Russia must be convinced in its head that it's been defeated, right? That you basically take on a defeatist attitude, that you go, we were crushed, this is bad, right? Um, a Russia that prevails would be a Russia even further empowered to meddle in Europe and to expand its influence with unlimited violence. A Russia that will have learned that it can commit slaughter and atrocities with impunity. A Russia whose ambitions will grow with success. A Russian victory would as well teach the world that the West, including the United States, lacks the resolve, despite its wealth, to follow through on its commitments, offering Beijing an encouraging lesson. In other words, you also have to worry about what this shows China about invading Taiwan in the future. Russia must be convinced that the military instrument and its deployment in large-scale war will inevitably fail, and it must realize that Ukraine is permanently and completely lost. Listen to the last, last line. This is the not the last line of the story, but the last line I'm going to quote you. To be brutal about it, we need to see masses of Russians fleeing, deserting, shooting their officers, taken captive, or dead. The Russian defeat must be an unmistakably big, bloody shambles. Now, there's two things going on here. One is, uh, this argument is that Russia needs to, and I'm sharing it because, again, everyone's been, everyone who does defense and national security on Twitter has been sharing this as a big sort of, you know, interesting, oh, Six Evil, you did have something. Hang on. Yep. Thank you. I, I will get to that next. Thanks. Thanks, Roshan. I had started to save it and then forgot. Sorry about that. I will get to you, Six Evil. Um, so the first is, to save Ukraine in the long run, Russia must be defeated to the point where, thank you, Wandara, for the for the <laughs> for the swan, must be defeated to the point that it realizes Ukraine is lost. It is never getting Ukraine, right? That's the first thing. To save Ukraine so they never try again. But the larger point, and the article hints at this in that line I gave you, but it doesn't, um, the article doesn't develop it. The article is focused more on Ukraine. But the larger issue, again. 
I'm going to read you this again. Um, about the Russian victory in impacting China, right? What China does, but um, Russia will have learned that it can, that it, uh, well, okay. Russia Russia will, will be empowered to meddle in Europe, expand its influence with unlimited violence. It will learn that it can commit slaughter and atrocities with impunity. I would say Russia's already there. Russia is an imperialistic country that already thinks it can do all these things and should do all these things. I think that, and I was talking with my cousin about this interesting, really discussion this weekend, and we were talking about he's he finally watched the uh, Timothy Snyder uh, class at Yale. There's an online class that's really interesting about the history of Ukraine going back to the beginning, um, and I just started watching it. Very good. It's a twenty three. It's twenty three classes filmed at Yale of this professor's semester, and he's a brilliant guy. And I mean, literally you take a Yale course. I mean, it's, it's, I'm already watching it going, this is so cool. Well, I think what he's getting at, because at least what my cousin was telling me is that Russia needs to have an epiphany, a catharsis, whatever you want to call it. But Russia has to become like England, the UK. It has to become like France, right? It has to become a country that realizes it is no longer an imperial power, right? France gets that today. England, the UK gets that today. They are no longer imperial powers and they need to learn that, right? Well, Germany, I mean, Germany Germany, and Japan certainly learned it, right? I mean, after World War II. Um, but it's that kind of a national uh, re a reorganizing of the national mentality that happens and it only happens if you are utterly and totally defeated and destroyed. Destroyed doesn't necessarily mean the country is destroyed physically, right? And he even says in the article, I'm not talking about marching on Moscow, but the idea is that they learn that they, that basically we're no longer going to be able to do these kind of things. Yeah, but America too. I mean, somebody mentioned the USA being imperialist, but the same thing. I think the USA has learned over the years, we're certainly not the same country we were in the 1950s, right? We know we can't just, we can't do the kind of things we did then and maybe we shouldn't do them and they're not going to turn out well and everything else, right? Um, you haven't seen us use nukes since 1940, uh, 45 or 40. I always forget, uh, Japan, I know, probably 45, of course. Yeah, because it would have been the year after Germany, um, right? I mean, you know, countries change, but, but America as well had its own epiphany and we'll have more epiphanies going forward, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, but, but that the Russian mindset needs to change and the Russian mindset is actually one other thing here and then we'll just get to the questions is the idea that what is happening in Russia and what Russia is doing is not because this crazy dictator named Putin took over. It's because this is who Russia is. This is who the Russian people are. This is the kind of government they want and expect and will always have until there is some something that shakes that country up to its core and it changes and decides it wants to become a part of the modern civilized world. It wants to act in a civilized way. It wants to embrace democracy and freedom. It wants to embrace Europe, right? That, that it's, that it just, it wants to become something else. The Yale class, you can just, just Google it. You'll find it. Timothy, Schne Timothy Schneider, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. Is it Schneider or Snyder? S-N-Y-D-E-R. Um, and it's just, I would say it's free on YouTube. Type in Yale. Uh, Yale, Ukraine, Timothy Schneider or Snyder class, and you'll find it. Um, and you will find it on YouTube and you'll also find it as a podcast uh, for free as well. If you do, if you prefer podcasts, you know, if you want it running in the background, I liked it on YouTube just because you could see him speak. And for me, that was a little more interesting. Um, but like I said, I watched the first class yesterday. It was really good. And you could, you know, it's 23, but watch it slowly, you know? All right. I'm going to go and, um, Go to the questions now, Q and A. Uh, do check. I also have a store as well that I always forget to push to you guys. It's um, uh, store.erovosis.com. You can find the links in my bio again on TikTok. Sorry, I'm head itching. You can find the link in my bio. Uh, look for the link tree link on TikTok. Click it, and all my links come up in a row, including my Discord. Please do check that out. But my store as well. Uh, you guys can go to erovosis.com. And I'm going to get to six Evo's question right now. You can go to erovosis.com. You can find the links there as well to my store. And we've got a lot of cool Ukrainian themed stuff. And as another way of helping Ukraine, from the beginning, I committed, thank you for the pause there, Happy Beach. I committed that um, any of the profits from the store for any of the Ukraine stuff, and I think it's all Ukraine stuff really at this point, um, will go to uh, will go to Ukraine. Uh, not the pro I'm sorry, half the profits, of course, half, because I'm still trying to make a living doing this. Um, thank you, Pamela. 
and Pamela Marie for that. Um, the uh, So yeah, so check out the store, store.arevosis.com and know that half of the profits, because obviously it goes to the company that makes the shirts first, but half of the profits I get go right back to Ukraine. And we've been giving uh, a lot of humanitarian aid, lately helping build uh, camouflage nets for the Ukrainian uh, military. Um, we've got, uh, we've been helping them buy drones. We've been buying drone extenders, which are like Wi-Fi extenders that we've been um, uh, helping basically extend the, the the range their drones can go with these three boxes we bought that were very cool. Only like 600 bucks each, but we were able to extend it, which is very cool. Um, anyway. Lots of fun stuff. Yeah, Daniel put up the class here. I will put it, there you go. For all of you on YouTube, et cetera. So it's Timothy Snyder. That's what I thought it might be. Snyder, S-N-Y-D-E-R, The Making of Modern Ukraine. So you can Google it. And this is, it's a wonderful 23 classes that he videotaped, but he also has a, a podcast up about it. Thank you for the classic breakfast. It's not telling me your name. It's giving me a dash. Okay, incognito person. Thank you for the breakfast there. Uh, but Timothy Snyder, The Making of Modern Ukraine, really good. All right, let's jump in, guys. Um, make sure I didn't... Oh, Six Evo, I'm going to forget you again. All right, Six Evo, do you see Russia attempting to escalate the war with all these recent events, F-16s, Belgorod? Nope. Um, did you also hear about the peace talk soon with Africa? Yeah. So Africa is sending some kind of a delegation or something um, to Ukraine to... Uh, and the Russia, basically, Africa is, I'm trying to find the nice word here that won't get me banned, is um, selling itself on behalf of Russia. <laughs> there, that, that's the nice, that's the nice phrase I could use. Um, they're going and they're arguing that we really need these grain exports, but we really need the sanctions to be lessened for Russia for its, for its fertilizer and everything else. Well, Russia's sanctions for its fertilizer. Russia's claiming we can't export. You said we could export fertilizer when Ukraine exports grain, but we can't export fertilizer because you put all these sanctions on us with the banks and everything, and it makes it really hard. So we'd like the banking sanctions to be less. Yeah, big surprise Russia's saying that. Africa, from what I read, is backing up Africa, on, is backing up Russia on this. So basically, just like China's peace proposal or Elon Musk's peace proposal was a reiteration of Russia's peace proposal, Africa's argument that we should export Ukraine's grain and Russia's fertilizer is an argument, is Russia's argument that Africa's promoting. No big surprise, since most of these African countries basically have sold themselves to the white imperialists in Russia. Big surprise there. So South Africa, especially. So, um, the first part of your question was, do you see Russia attempting to es escalate the war with all these events? You know, Russia and what army, as the jokes go, you know, like when you were kids and somebody would threaten you, you go, yeah, you and what army? I mean, what army does the Russia plan to use to escalate? I ask, right? Anytime they talk about escalation, I mean, what are they going to do? Commit genocide? Done that, right? Throw more tanks? They don't have them. More artillery? They don't have them. Nukes? No. We already talked about that, right? Nuke, biological, chemical. We've talked about that enough. I'm not going to go through all of it now. Thank you, Jessica, for the hat. But Russia gets no benefit out of using those weapons, and they force NATO to enter the war. NATO enters the war. Russia's toast. Absolute toast. So what can Russia do to escalate? Zero. Zero. I would also say, why hasn't Russia escalated already? Seriously, they're not winning this war, right? Thank you, Tom Clark. Why, if if Russia could escalate, why haven't they? It would be criminal for them not to have escalated at this point, right? I mean, they're, they're not quite, I mean, there was literally a quote the other day from uh, a Russian member of parliament saying, we haven't yet begun to fight. We haven't yet begun to fight. And you know what? You're 450 days into a war that was supposed to go like three days or 10 days, and you're telling me you haven't begun to fight? Then you're nuts. I mean, you should be you know, Ceausescu at this point, if you're a leader who is over a year into a war and you literally haven't started fighting yet, you're nuts. You've lost over 200,000 men and you haven't started fighting that yet, right? So that's why I say like, literally, what are they going to do? They can't use nukes. They use nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons and NATO will enter the war and it's over. So what are they going to do? Nothing. And by the way, that's why Joe Biden this weekend, there was a wonderful video of Biden. Hold on. I think I've got the video here. Um, it was a wonderful video of Biden this weekend. And um, here it is. The pr thing is, okay, it's, um, 
he's um i've got to see if it's got the oh it doesn't have the okay hang on i need to find the actual uh the actual here it is the actual text the text says the question yelled at Biden is, how would you respond to the claims of the Russian Foreign Affairs Ministry that supplying F-16s is a colossal risk? And this is Biden at Hiroshima, right? So how would you respond to the claims of the Russian Foreign Ministry that supplying Ukraine with F-16s, the fighter jets, is a colossal risk? I'm going to show you this from Biden and see if you can, hopefully you can hear it. Um, the, the first part you won't hear very well. Second part, um, second part you'll be able to hear. You won't be able to hear the first part, but I'll put it here. It is for them. Says, how would you respond to those saying it's a, to the Russian foreign ministry saying it's a colossal risk? You providing the F-16s, and he goes, it is for them, and that's it. That's the only answer he gave. That was, you know, one of those snap moments, one of those slap you across the face moments. What was interesting about that is that means a Biden isn't afraid of Russia. B specifically Biden thinks Russia's threat is meaningless. He finally got to the point that he realized that Russians threats mean nothing. Russians threat about escalation mean nothing. And he I mean he literally was making fun of Russia is what he was doing. Now, another good thing there is it means that this is what Biden actually believes. It is possible, it was possible, I don't think it's possible now, that Biden went along and said, okay, we'll give Ukraine F-16s because all my staff and my generals are saying we should do it, but I've got a bad feeling about this, but okay, let's do it. He could have said that, right? Or he could not said that, he could have thought that. If that was the reason Biden gave, thank you, PS Pam Pam, if that were the reason Biden gave, or in his head, for giving the F-16s to Ukraine, he wouldn't have said that. He wouldn't have said, basically, Russia can go F itself if they're worried about us escalating with the weapons. He would have given a more cautious answer or something. But the fact that he said, he basically said F you to Russia in response because he, that's what he said. Is, is it a dangerous escalation? It is for them. That means Biden is 100% bought in to doing this. And it means that he doesn't care about escalating anymore, which is great because it also means Ukraine might be able to get long range weapons. You know, there's still other things they may be able to get either more of them or even better weapons. I mean, there isn't a lot left in terms of better weapons, but there are some like the attack comes and some other things. Um, so uh, what were you? I forgot, I forgot what your question was or whatever, but I was thinking of the Biden thing. Oh yeah. As far as he's not even worried about the escalation anymore. Thank you. I would block me for the heart there. Um, let me go and pull up a TikTok question on TikTok itself. Um, okay, yep, I got both of you guys, good. And Daniel, thank you again for that. That was very generous of you, I appreciate that. All right, TikTok gifts, TikTok gift. Where are you? Here we are, Q&A. Um, there are a lot of, I mean, uh, yeah, we can talk about that. I mean, Sam. Yeah, there's other people who've been getting, I mean, I, I had a problem with getting banned on TikTok at the beginning too. They don't bother me anymore, but at the beginning they did. Um, the maximum range of a Javelin rocket launcher is around 4.8 kilometers. And a few days ago, Ukraine hit a Russian tank at 4.7 kilometers. I think it was a record. Oh, that's interesting. Actually, there was also this weekend, I forgot to mention, um, the Ukrainians, who else would it be, shot down a Russian bomber, I believe. I'm forgetting which, it was an SU- could it have been 37? I don't want to sound totally ignorant about their planes. Um, but it was a Russian bomber that was flying, I want to say around here off of Kherson, and the Ukrainians shot it down. And it was on a bombing run. It had either just come back or was going uh, 35? If people are saying 34, 35. I think it was a 35. That's yeah, I think so too. Um, and uh the Ukrainians shot it down. Now we're not sure how they shot it down. I was reading it might have been a surface to air missile. It didn't necessarily have to be a uh, Patriot, but it was kind of a big deal. It was a it was a big bomber. <laughs> I mean, it was a big bummer for Russia and a big bomber. It was a lie, says Prince Tartu. It was a lie, I tell you. Russia's already won the war. We're just getting our men killed because it's fun. <laughs> We've already won the war. <laughs> That's why we're having another draft. <laughs> <laughs> That's why 220,000 Russian troops have been killed or injured fighting in this war because it's a lie. We've won already. Yes, I'm sure you have. Okay, that was that was a that was a little bit of a that was Transylvanian, not really Russian, but you get the idea. I would say that was I was doing Dracula though. It's a lie. <laughs> 
not exactly Russian. Um, oh my, oh my. We are not 113 billion into this war, but also I would say the U.S. has spent about 5% of its defense budget on helping Ukraine. And you know what we've gotten in return? The Russian military absolutely decimated the, I would say the, the one of the three th biggest threats to America, Russia, long-term China, and Russia's more short-term China, long-term terrorism overall. And one of them has been destroyed in this war over the last year. Russia, five, six percent of our defense budget we've spent um, destroying Russia through via Ukraine. That count it is Count Chocula, or it's the uh who is it? Von two, three. Um, the the count, what's his face on um, Sesame Street? Um, but uh yeah, so you know what? This this is money better spent. Was Bela Lugosi Hungarian? Oh, that's interesting. This was money better spent than anything we could have ever spent it on, um, destroying that country's military. And you know, and God bless the Ukrainians for do it for doing it. And I would also add, um, yeah, watch it, glorious people. People get fooled by that. The we've had that happen. Yeah, you always do have to put in joke or joke because we've had that on TikTok before, where somebody was sort of being funny, but they count chocula. That's it. It but someone was being funny, but it sounded like they were being real, and we blocked them by accident. It's like, oops. Um. Anyway. Yeah, this is you know, it doesn't get any better than what the Ukrainians have done for us. Really, we I mean we owe them a great. They we have they owe us all a great debt, and we owe them a great debt for what they have done taking down Russia. You know, I mean really insane. You think of how much money had to be spent on the Cold War of all those years. Certainly after World War II, you were talking 45 years of the money, of the billions of, I mean, God, billions. I mean, I don't even know what the total was. It clearly was trillions at that point. I mean, how much money was actually spent having to take on the Soviet Union? The fact that, oh, SB got banned on TikTok? Who banned SB on TikTok? SB's a good one. SB, uh, put down what your 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 name is on TikTok. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was a mistake. SB is a good. SB is a good one, but write down what your name is and, um, you know, put it there. And I'll just when we'll let the TikTokers know. I mean, let the TikTokers know to unban you. Um, Wilson Pava, thank you. Oh, are you banned? Oh, you mean you got banned accidentally? You mean ah, you were one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, never mind. TikTokers. He was one of the accidental bans. Exactly. Um, Wilson Pava, any chance China is actually closer to Russian levels of ineptitude than we think? Mm. Who knows, right? I mean, we don't know what we don't know, right? Um, especially thinking about their Navy, keep up the good work. You know, I mean, wouldn't that be great? I guess the thing is, though, I guess we don't really. I mean, clearly we don't know. We wouldn't. I was going to say Count Chocula is the serial. Thank you. Somebody realized because I saw Count Chocula. It's not Count Chocula. It's the, um, the I think they just call him the Count. Right? Kyle. I think they call him the Count on Sesame Street, right? Does he have a name other than Count? Or just the count. I never watched Sesame Street. That was a little. I was watching other stuff. Captain Kangaroo was my thing back then, and Ray Rayner, but not the count. Um, um, you know, I mean, we don't know as far as uh, as far as China. Um, it would be great if China were as inept. I will say, what is interesting to okay, I'm giving this as a civilian, not a military, because I'm not a military guy. What is interesting about China is China makes a lot of crap, a lot, but it's crap, right? Ever since we started making things in China, they fall apart. We don't, I mean, I know in the, most, most of our imports are made in China. Things don't hold together anymore, right? T-shirts aren't as good of quality. Um, now that they come from China and other places. Products don't hang together. They're cheaper. They don't last as long, right? And I'm not just saying this like the nostalgic old person thing. Things just aren't as well made in China. Um, I would hope <laughs> that that the Chinese military equipment is built the same way as all of Chinese stuff, cheap and easy and and uh, prolific, but cheap in the end, right? Um, and it, it certainly is an interesting question. Um, China ain't Japan, put it that way, right? I mean, Japanese stuff you bought and it was Japanese, like you, this Japanese stuff was good, right? You don't buy Chinese stuff and go, ooh, that piece of tech is Chinese, ooh. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't really do that. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 it's an interesting question. I mean, the problem, of course, is just like with Russia, we don't know what we don't know. I mean, a lot of people thought Russia was garbage, but in terms of, I mean, the quality of their military and all of that, because we knew about the we knew about the theft and the corruption. But I mean, nobody thought it was going to be 
oh, this is driving me nuts. My little, if I put my speaker, my microphone on my collar, I know it bounces around because you guys warned me about that once. I'm going to keep it here. Um, but you know, we don't know. Sony, exactly. I wasn't right. Sony, right. That's all you need to do is quote, right. Sony, my God, right. Name a China. I mean, mind you, having said that the drones, I mean, China's got a lot of drones that the Ukrainians and others are using that are really good. So who knows, you know, you can get any quality that you pay for in China. Well, that's an interesting question though, right? Like whether, but I mean, so that's my question is, is the military able to get just ridiculously high quality stuff? Maybe, maybe it is a dictatorship, but then again, dictatorship goes both ways. I mean, I was reading, what was I reading last week about this? That, um, I forgot where, but that typically in the West, we think, and this is the Russia stuff too, we think of dictatorship as being, boy, those dictatorships have an advantage on us. They can just tell their industry to do whatever they want and they do it. You know, they build it and blah, blah, blah. And we sort of forget the bad side, which is, you know, these planned economies often are not as efficient and they often don't create stuff that's as good as our stuff. My God, today, people were showing today on Twitter, it was, it was retweeted by somebody I... I respect. So I'm assuming it's it's real, or I should say it was retweeted by people I respect. Let me show you this. It was very interesting. Um, thank you again for that, Wilson. Uh, hang on a second. Let me see if I can find the... Uh... There was a car accident today, or in the last day, of the Russian pa the head of the Russian church. Um, Kirill, thank you. I would block me for, the, uh, for this. Oh, here we go. The car accident today, head of the Russian church. And I'm going to show you really quick. It's going to show his car and his car is the first one that you're going to see that's a disaster here, okay? But what I want you to do is notice how bad that car is. His car drove into it's a Russian car. It um it is what kind of it's a Russian Auris Sonat, Auris Sonat, and it drove into a Volvo, okay? It was a Volvo. It the, the Russian car smashed into the door of the Volvo. So you'd think both of them would have been destroyed. Somebody said, look at the difference here. I shall show you guys first. So that's the car of the patriarch. And then they're going to show the car that he rammed into next. Hang on a sec. That's the car he slammed into. Right? Not great. But, right? It's like a tank <laughs> compared to his car. Now, let me show you guys really quick. Okay? So that's the... Oops. That's the Patriarch's car. I mean, you can see, it's just, I showed you here, that's destroyed. But take a look at the car that he, that he drove into, the Volvo. And you're going to see the door is smashed, but I mean, I mean, but again, when he goes around to the front, it looks like the rest of the car is fine. I mean, it probably isn't. But look at that. Okay. Versus, we'll go to the first picture and just hold it, versus this. I mean, the car, that car just crumpled. And that is the difference between Russian technology and, I always forget, Volvo, is that is that a Swedish? I always forget. It is Swedish, isn't it? Yep, yep, you know? Um, so, you know, we, we, we can only hope it's the same thing with China, but who knows, right? I mean, you know. Uh, throw up more questions. Let me get that off there. More questions, more questions. Beep, 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 beep. Um, let me see here. Hey, Paul, with the anti-Putin group plus Ukrainian, could we see the beginning of the end of the war and could we see a Russian civil war brewing? You know, I, I think this group is more of a, of a distraction intentionally. This, this group of like Russian rebels that are attacking in Belgorod and, and <laughs> have taken over, have taken over some Russian land. Um, I think they're doing it to, to freak the Russians out and to distract them. As I was saying before, these guys attacked today here in Belgorod. Russia needs to be worrying about the Ukrainian counteroffensive that is probably going to be around here, <laughs> right? Or, or I'll even go wider. Here is the most probable area that Russia needs to worry about. Now they have to worry about all the way up here, which means they've got to send troops. They've got to send tanks. They've got to send, I mean, and they've got to send it quick because they can't have these, these guys already took over some towns. They liberated several towns, right? I mean, they need, the Russians need to get there and take that land back. Because also think of how it looks too. You're Putin in Moscow and you're fighting a war and somebody just took over a couple of Russian towns. You need to get, that needs to be liberated by like tonight. By the time Russians wake up tomorrow, those towns need to be free or it looks awful. 
absolutely awful. So um, the Russians now are having to move a ton of troops that they don't have to that part of Russia versus fighting Ukraine. Thank you, Chef, for that. The, um, the Somebody was asking what the drinks are. Uh, people long ago started something with the map that every time I show the map, they go drink and they show a bunch of uh, drink symbols on uh, on TikTok and YouTube. So I didn't start it. <laughs> <laughs> but people, the people, uh, they like the map. They find the map funny. And it's, the map is an old, it's great though. The map is a t-shirt that I turned into a map, but it's a really good map. I'll show you guys. Anybody who knows Ukraine, it's a really good map. Look at this. Even in Crimea, you've got like, like the, the tip, basically the places Ukraine would attack, Kerch, uh, Simferopol, Sevastopol, they're there. It's a really, it's a really, <laughs> it's goofy, but it's a good map. I love it. Um, and it's also easy to read too with the colors. So there. A um, few more questions, guys. A few more questions. I mean, I can take more of the TikTok questions. I was just seeing the blue map is, is in DC. I'm in Chicago visiting my mom for the month. I'll be leaving uh, this weekend. So the blue map is there. And the, I'll do the recap. I do the recap at the end. Yep, don't worry. Uh, but the, and this is my red. I got the red map just to have a different color shirt, even though red isn't Ukraine's color. I like red is my color. So I wanted a, a shirt that I could wear eventually, although I've never worn this thing. I'm always, uh, it's it's my map. <laughs> you can submit, actually, you can submit questions right here and I'll probably see it now. Typically, we have people submit the questions via the Q&A link that's in my profile on TikTok. Um, but you can always try to do it here if you want. And I'll see if I see it. Um, Thank you for was that uh, zinc for the hearts. Thank you for that. Well, I can I can also do another quick little question or two off of TikTok too, just to make it easy, and then we'll we'll call it quits. Um, what's going on with the UK tanks? I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, British people. I believe all the British tanks have already arrived. Pretty sure of that. Um, now the Brits were sending 14 Challenger tanks, and I don't remember if they were sending anything. Didn't they up the number of something else? Um, Andrew, blame my mother and father. Um, but thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Who was the music? Was that Paul with the music? It was. Thank you, Paul. Um, um the uh, uh the tanks. Help me out here, folks. Uh, but the Brits already sent all the challenge. Uh, it's 28 now. But I thought they were all there, or was it the initial tanks were already there? Are they all there? Ben, before you go, I need an answer. Have all the British tanks arrived or not? I thought I read a few weeks ago all the British tanks had arrived. Anybody? <laughs> before I let them... It is late for the Brits, though. So that's... They're already in Ukraine. That's what I read. 14 there, 14 coming. Ah, that's what it is. Okay. So the 14 originally promised are there. Okay, that's 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 what I was wondering. Okay. Okay, that's still very good if that's the case. That's good. Yeah. So that's what's up with the British tank. Somebody was asking, am I worried about AI? Yeah, I am now. I wasn't until now, you know, now I am. I, because up until now I was kind of like, Oh, Terminator. Ha, ha. How does that really happen? Now I understand how it actually happens. Now I understand how technology becomes actually sentient or for all intents and purposes, sentient. Right. I mean, it's sort of like the definition of life, right? When you talk about like, um, I'm forgetting, but it reproduces, it eats, I think it may excrete. I'm trying to remember what the other what the other aspects were of defining life and how, you know, with that definition, things that aren't things that aren't necessarily uh, um, alive could be considered alive that we don't realize. Thank you, Jared, for the guitar. I now understand how technology can become sentient and I understand how it could decide that it's in its best interest or it could even decide it's in man, man, mankind's best interest for it to take over, which is a little scary. Um, my YouTube channel is John Aravosis DC because YouTube will not let me use my name, even though no one else has it because YouTube's evil sometimes, but it's John Aravosis DC. Um, let me do a quick recap guys, and then we'll call it quits for the night. All right. Um, okay. Recap, recap. And I'll be back tomorrow. Of course, 6 PM Eastern time U S thank you for the pause. Happy beach. Um, it is day 452 of, of Putin's 10 day special military operation in Ukraine. We talked at length about Belgorod, which is a Russian region and town both across the border here from Ukraine, that there was an incursion today. Thank you, Shane, for the pause. Uh, there was an incursion today, an insurrection, where basically some Russian troops uh, or Russian men as uh, soldiers invaded and liberated three towns from Putin and are basically declaring independence from Russia. Wild stuff, uh, certainly going to 
make the uh, make Putin kind of freak out. Thank you, Carol and Webadeb. And I think the idea was to make Putin freak out. It was to make Putin have to almost turn his eye away from where he thinks the or the um, the uh, counteroffensive is coming from and look all the way up northeast. Thanks, Shane, again for the pause. Uh, all the way northeast and start to focus there, which wastes time and energy. They've got to move troops there. They've got to put weapons there. They've got to move planes there because they've got to get this territory back from the rebels. And it just screws up their plans for fighting the counteroffensive. So brilliant plan. Ukraine... Ukraine, I think, had a hand in it. They helped these guys. They trained them. They gave them weapons, whatever, because it was a brilliant move by Ukraine. And having Russians, because in the end, maybe Ukraine helped, but they're Russians, right? Thank you, Don, for the whale, the, the new and improved whale. Maybe not improved. People are people disagree, but thank you for that. Um, the uh, um, the yeah, Ukraine did a very smart move here because they're Russians and they are Russians. They're not Ukrainians. Ukraine might have helped them, but so what, right? They're Russians. Ukraine's not attacking Russian soil. Ukraine isn't on Russian soil. They aren't American weapons on Ukraine on Russian soil. They're Russians, right? Oh well. I mean, Ukraine's like a Ukraine's like a little kid that's really good at finding the way out of what you what they told you they would do or wouldn't do. <laughs> it's like I never. I said I wouldn't invade Russia. I said I wouldn't use your weapons to invade Russia. I didn't. I said I wouldn't attack Russia. I didn't attack Russia. Right, like, well, they're not wrong. The Russians attacked Russia. Oh well. Um, did Bakhmut fall? Ain't terribly clear. That was our second topic. Ain't terribly clear. Bakhmut fell. They're still fighting in Bakhmut today, which you wouldn't expect in a town that had fallen and was under control of the Russians. Second of all, I then talked about General Hurtling, a big American general, retired, very smart guy, who talked about how, basically, if you look at a topographical map of Stupid allergies are going nuts today. Of Bakhmut, you will see that the Russians control the main part of the town that is in the valley, and surrounding it in the hills, or maybe it's even mountains, but certainly hills around Bakhmut, are the Ukrainians. North, west, and southwest are the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians, as Hurtling said, have the Russians surrounded from the hilltops. <laughs> and he thinks in a week it's going to be a disaster for the Russians when the Ukrainians basically, you know. St not start fighting back, but start just bombing them from the hills. So maybe Russia got Bakhmut, maybe not. Um, the um, Wall Street Journal, NATO, uh, Wall Street Journal has an article about NATO considering doing uh, an Israeli style, Israel style security guarantee for Ukraine that we would promise to give them a certain amount of aid for 10 years and promise to defend them if Russia attacks again in order to convince Russia that we are so serious about the long term aid of Ukraine that A, they should give up the war and B, if the war ends, they shouldn't start it again. I talked a lot of reasons why I think that's not going to work. And then finally, we talked about the Atlantic article. It's very good. It's called It's Not Enough for Ukraine to Win. Russia Has to Lose. Uh, it's a very good article in the Atlantic if you subscribe or can get a free. I think I think you can get a couple. All right, I'll cover you up. I think you can get a couple uh, free. By the way, anybody who doubts me, if you could hear that, I tell people and they don't believe me. That was my dog telling me to cover her up. She just gave the Hur! sound. It's. She early on trained me with various sounds. Sorry, my allergy, my nose is itching. That was the, Ash heard it. That's the sound she makes when she wants to be cut. And she's, because she likes to be under stuff. She's on my chair, but I cover her with my jacket and her, she wasn't covered. So she made the sound for me to pick. And I did, I grabbed the jacket, covered her, and now she's quiet. Crazy dog. I mean, brilliant dog, but it freaks me out sometimes that like she speaks to me. It's also funny because my mother says like, she's got you trained. <laughs> And she does have me trained, but it's so cute. <laughs> um, anyway, um, this article is really interesting. It's not enough for Ukraine to win. Russia has to lose because it's uh, basically saying for the sake of Ukraine, um, but also for the sake of the West and the world, Russia needs to have an epiphany that it can no longer be an empire, that it has failed and it will fail and just like the Brits and the French and what the Japanese and the Germans before it, they need to learn that it just, you know, there ain't no more, ain't no more of this. You're not going to attack your neighbors. You're not going to attack anybody else. You suck. You're no longer, you're not the Soviet Union and you're never going to be the Soviet Union again. Stop doing the World War II thing. You're not the Soviets anymore and you never will be. You know, they, well, they had a lot of issues, but you're not them. You know, um, 
It's a very good article. You've got to read it. But it's, in other words, the the actually, let me read the one that one sentence that I thought was just wild. Um, the one sentence was to be brutal about it. We need to. They, they were talking about Russia. Not only does Ukraine have to win, but Russia has to lose. To be brutal about it, we need to see masses of Russians fleeing, deserting, shooting their officers, taken captive or dead. The Russian defeat must be an unmistakably big, bloody shambles. Boom. And that is the news for tonight. And there was another question or comment from Eve Killer. Oh, not related to Ukraine, but did you work out what I was attempting to say in Discord about the everyone tag? Uh, there's no way to work it out. I, I looked. I can't find anything about it. Nothing I can do about it. Um, if people turn off the every, and there, by the way, there also isn't any ability for, for me as a user to turn off the everyone tag. So I'm not totally convinced that it exists. Uh, because in my settings for myself as a user, they don't exist. But bottom line is, as I said, there's about 16 different categories of users with the with actually there's probably 20 with the moderators, and there's zero chance in hell <laughs> that I'm going to go and tag all those people every time I write a post. Ain't going to happen. So if folks are on Discord and somehow you've blocked at everyone messages, you're missing out on a lot. That's all I can say. But thank you for that, Eve. Appreciate that. But yeah, no, there's I couldn't find I couldn't back it up though. I looked it up. So. All right, guys. Good night. I'm going to go inside and see what we're doing for dinner. I think we've got avgolemono, fresh avgolemono soup. Anybody who knows Greek stuff, if you don't, you're missing out. It's a wonderful soup. And I will see you guys tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern. We will be in the Discord all day. Actually, I'll be in the Discord tonight, too. I check in all times a day, tomorrow as well, during the day. Check it out, discord.aerovosis.com. It's free. But of course, if you like my work, feel free to subscribe and help me out. I would very much appreciate that to help me keep this work going. And um, boom, there you go. Thanks, guys. I'm going to sign off. Have a good night. Buen provecho. Gracias. Um,